Hey everyone. So I'm working on some memory bears and just thought I would sew a couple with you. So I've um, got two of them put together and I'll be stuffing one of them for you. Um, but I've got to make six so I'm working on the next two. This is actually a pattern that I get from an online company called, I think it's Funky Friends. Funky Friends Factory, if I can spit that out. Um, I have tried some other patterns. I I seem to like this one the best. Um, it sits, the bear will like sit up, so I kind of like that. Um, so if you've never tried one, um, I would try their pattern first. Some of the other patterns, um, the bear is just, you know, it doesn't sit up. So I figure if this is a memory bear, somebody wants to place it somewhere. It's not necessarily like a child's um, plush bear kind of pattern, you know, where, um, you know, I had some bears that didn't necessarily fit that way. Um, but anyway, so I'm going to be working on a couple and just thought I would uh, show you guys the process. And I'll put a link to the pattern after uh, the video gets done and uploaded. I'll put a link to the pattern um, if anybody's interested. But it's a PDF pattern and it has... Um, instructions and everything that you can download. So here's all the little pattern pieces. So for the head you have let's see, one, two, get all my pieces here. I mean I have them all here. Three. I think there's four pieces for the head. So but you'll download your PDF. Um, it's super easy and then just you know cut out your pattern. Um, you've got a few little darts that you need to put in, um, but it's got letters, as you can see, on the pattern pieces. So your instructions are very, um, they're very detailed because it will tell you, you know, where to match, you know, which letter to match. If you haven't done much sewing, that's very handy. A lot of times, because I've been sewing so long, um, I like to just kind of, I can kind of tell how things will go um, just based on the shape of it. So that's kind of helpful. So what I am doing... We had a bag of silver garments, and really, to make a bear, you probably just need one one article of clothing, maybe two, just depends on the size, but it also depends on if you want it to be kind of patchwork or what. You know, so um, on this particular bear, uh, the black with some pants, this was um, a top, and then we've got some knit for the feet, and this was just a t-shirt. Um, so you can do it in all one material and you can make it totally patchwork. And then, you know, I did the ears, you know, that kind of thing. So it's really just kind of up to you. So the next one I'm doing, I've cut out two materials and um, kind of putting them together piece by piece. And actually now that I'm looking at this, I just realized I wanted to put the different feet on here. So now you get to watch me steam rip because I was, what I'm going to do I was just sewing away. I'm going to piece together. Um, I'm going to make like green. I'm going to do a head and a body and then make the legs out of this material and the arms. And I just realized I just sewed the same material. So let me go grab my seam ripper. Oh, actually, I got one right here. It doesn't matter how long you've been sewing, you always need a seam ripper close by. <laughs> because this, as I'm putting it together, is going to make it all one thing, and I wanted to make it a little more patchworky. So I'm mixing these two um, materials together, which is good because now I can show you how to sew um, the legs on. So let me get this taken apart real quick. That's what happens when you just get going. Because this just kind of makes the bear a little bit cuter, you know, if you kind of mix some patterns together. That way you can kind of use more garments. I have decided, you know, sometimes, um, you know, when you're, when you're doing several things, you want to kind of streamline it and cut everything out at one time. 
um, and then you know piece things together. We did, um, I think we had a customer order 10 of these right before Christmas. And it was getting a little confusing because we did cut out all the pieces and all that kind of stuff. We didn't, they just wanted it out of one garment, but I will suggest that if you are doing a bunch of them, you know, like four or five of them at a time, I'm working with, I'm cut out two at a time because especially if you're mixing and matching that way you keep up with how many pieces you have cut of each material, which materials, you know, how you're matching it up. Cause I've already just kept on sewing and just wasn't even thinking. And I was like, I don't want to do that. Okay. So well, this may be a multi-part video. I don't know. Okay. So anyway, this is the bear's body and we just sewed right down the front seam. So this is what it looks like. So our leg, they're going to sew right into this, little um, area right here. I'm going to go ahead and sew that. Now when you get your pattern instructions it does say to use a lot of pens. I honestly don't like to use a lot of pens. I don't like to, I just don't like to pen a lot in general. It slows me down. But some of these little pieces, it's probably not a bad idea if you're not used to doing it. A lot of little snipping and trimming because you're sewing a lot of little pieces. So now I've got, you know, the other fabric sewed to the body. So now we've got some contrast. So that's going to make it a, a little more interesting and cute. And I just realized I'm going to take this apart. <laughs> I did. I put the same fabric and I wanted to switch it. So that way the front leg fabric matches the back leg fabric. I should have realized this before I started the video, but that's okay. <laughs> so I didn't necessarily sew the wrong pieces together. It's just not what I was wanting, I was intending to do. I want to mix and match a little bit. Thankfully, it's just a little short piece, so it'll come apart pretty quick. <laughs> okay, so now this is the back piece. It does have a little dart right here, so I've already sewed the dart together. And then I've sewed down the center. Okay, and now I'm going to be adding those feet right here because it'll stick out. Get those put back on with the right fabric to the brush.
Okay, so now you can see the contrast foot, and this will match up to the front and the back. So now I'm going to take my front and back piece, and we're going to sew around the bottom. And I'm going to put a pin just right where this seam is, just to make sure it stays lined up. Okay, so now going around the bear's bottom, <laughs> it curves. So we have to fit, you're going to have to kind of fit this in. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my center back seams, I'm going to line those up, and then you'll ease in the other fullness. So. As you can see, this is pretty tight. And then on the back side, this is pretty loose. So it's going to curve like that, and I'm going to ease it in there. allowance you're just using a quarter of an inch seam allowance now I've got the fullness on top so I'm going to pull the fabric that's underneath it just a little bit to stretch it it's cotton it's not really a stretch but I'm just going to pull it a little bit so that um, the fullness on top will just ease right in You just want to kind of sew in little short segments and that'll make it a little easier. And I've got a pin right at that center seam, matching up the front and the back. Got that sewed together. I'm going to angle you around just a little bit. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to, this is the bottom of the foot. We're going to leave this open because that's where we're going to put that circle uh, pad. So now we're going to sew right around here, the top of the bear's foot, and up the side. top part is sewed together but now you see you have this opening that's where the pad will go for the foot. Let me see if I cut that out. I did. Yay. So this is the piece for the foot. We've got two of those. 
Now what I like to do with this is fold my piece in half and put a pin top and bottom because then I can pin that to the seam of the foot. And I'm just putting this on the bottom right sides together. I haven't turned it or anything. Now I'm taking the where I have the pins and lining up the seams. And then I just kind of eyeball, kind of fit that in there a little bit. Now this works out good because this pad that I'm using, this particular material is a nib, so it obviously stretches. But again, you're just gonna kind of just do short sewing and just ease it in so it's pinned in just like that. one done. Now I'll fold this one in half and do the same thing. It just gives me a, a way to kind of line up the little foot pad with the foot. I'm just kind of rotating the leg as I move around too because it gets a little twisted. There's that one. So now, as you can kind of see, this is inside out. I'm angling it down a little bit. You can see the bear. We've got the bottom part going, and now we're going to work on the arms. And then I've already got, let's see, I have a head made for this one. Started it. Okay, then we'll work on the head. So let's see. This is the back. Okay, so we've got the front of the face for this one, and now I've got part of the back. Let's see, I think it was needing an extra piece cut. Yep, here it is. So 
and now we're going to work on the back of the head. So this is the side head piece. Got a little uh, dart right here. I'm going to sew that first. Now this is another one of these things, we've got a straight edge, but we've got a curved piece going on it. So again, another piece you're going to eat, I kind of start at the bottom, and line up the bottom because it's straighter right there, and then work in that curve. And as I'm doing this, I'm kind of pulling, you know, that curve over to that straight line. So this is the back, so now it's got to see it curves out. You've got this split in the middle. That will be closed up when we actually put the head to the body and then we'll stitch that up later. So now we have our front and back pieces of the head, but first we gotta make sure we have our ears put together. So this is the ear piece. And I'm gonna do the ears the same as the arms and the legs. I'm gonna be using the green. And you're going to put right sides together and just sew around the curve and then turn it and then we'll attach those to the head. And I am putting my needle down and raising the presser foot just a little bit to sew around that curve a little easier. Now I'm going to do the second ear. Now you do want to go ahead and turn these right side out and then we'll pin them to the head and then sew the front and back pieces together. Turn that right side out. Actually, I'm probably going to should have clipped that a little bit. Clip around that curve. It'll help to push it out a little bit. And I'm just using my fingers to push that out. Let's see. Okay, so on the front of the face, the ears are going to go right next to the, um, the head seam right here near that front seam. I'm pinning those on right there, and then we will put right sides together at the head, the back side, and sandwich those ears in together, and then just stitch it all at once. So I'm just pinning right where those ears are, so then Line this up and we'll sew front and back of the head together.
now you can see we have the shape of the head so far. And we're going to grab the body again and we are going to work on the arm. And you've got the inner and outer arm. Now this is where it gets a little tricky because the inner arm does not start up here at the top and you get the pattern. Let me see. Found the other pattern piece. Here. Where is that Actually starts. So here's the top of it. It starts down. So this is where it gets a little tricky on matching that up. It doesn't start up here where you would think it would because then it doesn't fit right. So we're going to come down a little bit. Let's see. I'm going to hold this pattern piece up to this so I'll make sure I'm about where it is. Yep, that'll do it. Now, I probably should have chalk marked that to mark it, but I didn't. So, I just want to show you this does not go all the way up to the top on either piece. and get the inner arm put together. Turn this, write that out now. Oh, and I see a little section I didn't get caught though on this leg. Let's stitch that real quick. It's really fun. You can see the bear taking shape. So now he has the under part of his arm. Okay, so now we need our outer arm, which is this piece right here. And it has a little dart at the top. I'm going to sew that up after I get the arm attached. I'm kind of laying this under, make sure that I've got the right arm going the right way. So, line this up. And this is probably one of the trickiest parts of the whole thing is just these arms kind of extend up past into the body a little bit. So, it can be a little tricky understanding that part.
just attached the arm. Now I'm going to do the dart and close that up. Because I've tried it closing the dart first and it's not as easy. Now our bear has an arm. <laughs> now let's get his other arm. arms stitched together and I'm going to close up the dart. So now we've got the body. Now we're ready to attach his head. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to sew up another little dart here. There's lots of little snipping to do with this because you so little areas, there's threads everywhere. Okay, so now we are going to line up so you leave a little opening at the back, you don't sew it all the way up. There's another dart I didn't sew up. Let me get that. It's got to be sewn before we put its head on. Okay. So we have the opening at the back of the head, and we're lining it up with the opening at the back of the body. I'm going to put a pin where the side seams meet. I'm going to put a pin where the center body seam meets the um, center of the head. And then I'll do one more. Line up the other side. I 
said I don't use a lot of pins. I will use the pins when I'm putting the head to the body. Got him lined up good. Hold on, but I got the wrong seam lined up. Okay, there we go. We are going to attach the head to the body. It does get a little tight as you throw the so you're going to have to kind of throw a little bit and then rotate the bear and you, as you sew. There's a lot of little starts or anything, so I'm just trying to make sure I'm getting everything smooth and everything's getting caught. And I'm kind of pulling out the neck here. Just Make sure it lays correctly. Okay. So, yay! We have a bear. Ta-da! Isn't he cute? Okay, so now we have this opening in the back. And we will put all the polyfill in through here. And then we will close this up by hand. Um, I use buttons for the eyes so we'll place those on I like to put the you can sew them on you know, before you stuff it honestly I like to get them stuffed and see what it looks like and then you can also add a nose there is a piece for a fabric nose sometimes I use buttons so it just kind of depends I you can do that before you stuff it but I have just found that I like to get get it to come to life before I finish the face so let me get the pony though Okay, so I've got this literally, let me get my camera, ginormous, the biggest bag there is, oops, the biggest bag from Walmart because I'm doing six of these, so honestly you don't need that big of a bag but because I'm doing so many, so I'm just grabbing a handful of this and then I'm going to stuff it in here, and this, you know, start with the legs. If you've ever had children and you've taken them to um, build a bear where they you know blow all the stuffing in there i kind of wish i could just have one of those machines and they would just put it all in there <laughs> but this way we can show you you just want to make sure that you do put enough polyfill in there to you know get it um, full enough and like kind of taut because it takes a lot more than you think <laughs> to get these situated. <laughs> like a small, like it'll probably take an entire small bag to do one bear. And honestly, I'm not even sure if I'll get all the bears out of this big box, big bag of polyfill. But I should get at least most of them. <laughs> and I'm just pulling big chunks and. So you want to push it down into the arms and the feet first and get them situated and then move into the body and then you know stuff the head that kind of thing but see you don't want to have it wrinkled right there but see how it's nice and firm so that's like when you're stuffing it that's what you want it to look like now I'm going to work on the arms, kind of 
do the same thing. It can be a little challenging because the opening's not that big. <laughs> I'm just pushing this in here. Turn my machine off because I'm using the industrial machine and it hums. <laughs> that motor. Make it a little quieter. Okay. And then get that arm firm. And then I'll do the head next. <laughs> And then when you're doing the head, you want to push it out, push the nose out. You know, get it into the front of the face really good. So you see how his head's flopping? It's because I don't have any polyfill in there yet. So you don't want any of the arms or legs, you know, doing that. That's why I gotta stuff them really good. <laughs> Now our bear has come to life. Angle that down just a little bit. Ta -da! So you may have to like stick your hand in there and kind of work it, make sure it's you know not overstuffed in one area versus another. And there's his ear. But see now he sits up, he'll sit up on his own, which is what I like. Now we will take this back portion and we'll pin this together. And then I'm going to hand stitch that and we'll hand stitch that close. And I also like to just add a ribbon um, around their neck. I just think that makes them cute. I have to work with his ears, get his ears stay put. But that's kind of the process. Um, they're fun to make, but they're just a little time consuming. <laughs> so you got to cut out all your pieces, but just kind of map out, you know, how you're doing your, you know, which fabric you want to use for your arms or the pads, if you want the ears to be different. Um, it's a lot easier if you're just using all one material because you just put it together, but sometimes you gotta think about it. So this makes it kind of different and cute, just being able So it's really fun. Um, but I just wanted to share that with you. Hope you have had fun sewing with me and maybe you'll try one and send me a picture of the bears that you make. Um, if you'd like to have a bear made, you know, we make them here at my shop. Even if you're not local, you can always uh, contact me. You can call our store and you can send us material. We'd be happy to make you one. So hope you guys have a great day. Be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel or hit that like button for this video if you've enjoyed watching. And I'll see you soon. Bye.